Hey Squiggly friends and mates. Today we're going to be doing a new setup. This is what we do while Mr. T is at work. Because this is his shredder. <laughs> For we who do worm farming indoors, this is a best friend for sure. A necessity. So, and so is this. She's, she's a worm farmer too. <laughs> Pieces of packaging. We've got some, it's not corrugated, but it's cardboard, thick paper. It doesn't even need to be shredded. It's already kind of shredded. So this too, it's a little bit stiff. I just happen to have this box and paper, tissue paper. Nice and thick. This is a very nice box. Eh. Let's split this into three. And the best way to do this is to take a piece and begin to tear it and just kind of rip it into sections first without hurting your hands. Oh, as I am so prone to do. And you don't want your shredder to heat up. So I usually get some going and then tear a bunch of boxes and give it a break every so often. begins to fill up. So we've got our wheel again. Okay. Try to remember not to breathe in dust from shreds or adding some water that's been sitting out for many a day dechlorinating, not necessarily the chloramine, that might not be dissipating, but whatever water you have to use, the best water you can use is good, and if all you have is city water, then that's what you use. So we're gonna add some. Give it a toss. You want it nice and nice and damp so that a few drops. And we'll add some material that made, made it through the sifter, didn't make it on the other side of the sifter. So this is what we call live bedding, live material with all the microbes and life that is inside a healthy bin to add to our new bin to try to raise those levels to get the microbes started in here. More healthy microbes. This was in the finishing bin, kind of holding moisture. Squeezing pretty hard. So it's looking just right. Got a good start here. When the worms eat, they do have an enzyme that breaks down cellulose. That's what's in paper and wood, cardboard products. So they can actually digest it. But as they're eating, they don't have teeth. They do have gizzards. And the gizzards, like in a chicken, help to crush up whatever food they do eat so that they can assimilate it. Um, so if it's soft enough, they might be able to eat it, but for the most part, they wait for other um, microbial and micro life to help break down all that food, and then they can eat it. So we wanna add some grit, and I'm gonna add some crushed eggshells. For grit, they can use sand, they can use eggshell, they can use even 
oyster shell. So you have to think about your own area when you're determining how moist to get your bedding. You wanna make sure that the worms have enough moisture that they can breathe with their skin, that they can stay moist enough to, to get oxygen and breathe and not so wet that you'll actually create wet pockets where anaerobic type of bacteria bacteria can live. And so in your area, if you're really dry, you know that you can have a little bit extra in your bin because it's gonna dry out really quickly. If, if you live in a really, in an area with really high humidity, constant high humidity, it's not gonna dry out as quickly. So you might wanna start a little bit drier than this is. and maintain that moisture level by watching it and adding a mist of water if you need to or adding some dry cardboard shreds. You can add more shreds if it becomes too moist. And if you've got an, a bin going, you don't wanna add shredded cardboard, but you wanna control moisture. You can take some sheets of cardboard and I've put them in vertically, kind of stacked them in vertically, big sheets, and they will wick up the moisture. Then you can take those sheets out and start a new bed with them. Or you could tear them up and keep them in the bed. The, the wormies will eat them whether it's whole or shredded. It's just they eat things faster when they have more surface area to feed on. It'll break down that much faster. But if your goals are to have more of a long-term food source, leave it in bigger chunks. If you don't want to have to attend to it, you know, kind of the set it and forget it way, then leave it whole. If you want them to process the material faster because you want the castings to use in your garden or wherever, um, then, you know, go ahead and make the material as small as you can and it will be processed that much faster. So this is already just a good start. This is from my area, perfect as far as how the moisture here. This is really good. Let's add some grit. I think we'll add eggshells. I like to add this to the entire bin when starting because, not just to a feeding, because when worms are born, they don't have any grit in their gizzards and they'll eat soft food, they're gonna be okay. Don't worry about them. They'll eat bacteria and they'll be fine. But as they're, the, the grit will stay in their gizzards for a while. So you don't have to feed them every feeding. It's not that they have to have grit with every feeding. They just need to have it sometimes. So I like to put it in the new bin just to make sure it's at least throughout so that as this material is being eaten by maybe new babies or whoever, that they've got grit. Got a nice little handful in here. So this is how I use them. Some of them are more powdered than others. And if they are a little bit bigger, that's okay. They'll either break down here or in the garden. And you wanna be careful not to breathe. I mean, you want to be careful not to breathe the dust. Don't let them breathe. So if there are little pieces, unless they drive you crazy, they're going to be fine. But if you find them along the way, break them down too. You just want, for the most part, you want there to be enough grit. And the rest is aesthetic as far as how once you want to break them down. Eventually they will break down. It could take years in the garden, but eventually they will. Toss it a bit. Make a nice mess. The funnest part of all this for me. Trying to get your hands in it. have a little bin here. Look familiar? It's one of my favorite secret ingredients, garlic skins. And this is going to hold the moisture real well. 
we're gonna go collect some wormies. So you can put little holes in a bottle if you wanna heavily water something. Or you can use a sprayer that you have. So we have some nice damp material so little wormies will be happy. This is a way to get babies. If you're looking for babies, just put your gloves on, go through your bin, and you will collect babies. <laughs> so here's some live bedding. Eh, it doesn't look so lively right now, right? So what I did is I went into the feeding zone of a couple of bins that I really needed to harvest some wormies out of anyway, kind of overfull. So I went into the feeding zone. So we've already got their food in here and we don't have to feed them right away. Um, and as you'll see, <laughs> as you'll see, we definitely have some live bedding here. So I'll just go ahead and put this on top. I'm kind of just picking off the top layer first. Because if you want to see some fun wormies in here. If they're available, I like to have a corn cob to transfer. So this corn cob that's in here had been in the freezer. And even after being in the freezer for goodness knows how long, it, <laughs> it still totally sprouted. I took all the sprouts off and tried to crush them so the wormies could eat them. But this whole thing sprouted and has roots to boot. So we were gonna be growing, not just corn, but growing a corn on the cob. <laughs> Could have just planted that. Uh, Wormies are going in and out. So that would be a good long-term food source since I didn't break it down at all. Here's the banana peel that was food in their bin. So that goes right in as food. Already has great microbial activity in it. Already started. Definitely have more than a thousand worms here. A lot more. Probably about two thousand. So some people talk about splitting a bin, meaning you could take about half of its population and move it into a new bin and start a new bin that way. You can do that. I'd rather have a new bin started so I could harvest the castings and personally, I'd rather harvest the castings first and then start a new bin with some of the microbial life that's in the bin, but not all of the castings. It's kind of like double work. I had plenty in the feeding zone this time so basically they were in migration so i could just go ahead and grab them so here <laughs> we have a squiggler lover's delight right here Woo. that is fun <laughs> There's always an oops when I'm doing a video. So, we have a lovely display of worms.
as the slow descent continues. Some of the things, if you didn't have any food, if the bedding that the worms came over in didn't have any food whatsoever, wasn't suitable as food, you could put a tiny bit of food in one corner, food that's already been decomposing for a while, so well rotted, I guess. Um, so you'd wanna use some food that's already been gotten into by yeah. bacteria and other microbes. Um, you could add a little bit of food if you wanted to, or wait, depending on how hands-on or not that you wanna be, you you can decide whether you wanna keep checking on them and feed as necessary, which I like to do in a new bin. I like to check it out because um, anything could happen, including what I'm calling now the new bin syndrome, which is a balance between bacteria, microbes, and life within. And until it reaches that homeostasis, that point where it all kind of finds its center and, and plays well with others, it could get too high of a pH, more so in the beginning, or could become acidic, or could come, become hot if you did add food and maybe accidentally mixed it with the carbon. So there's plenty of things that can happen uh, before your new worm farm reaches that point of homeostasis. So I don't have a problem checking checking on it often. It's fine with me, I enjoy So as these guys are descending into the abyss of their new home, Remember this material? This was that shredded, sort of almost shredded material, packing material. So this will help be a moisture barrier, as well as even providing some, some little kind of rougher edges that the worms like to help them get worms I mean, get cocoons off with, kind of help them. So we have our new bin. We have a brand new setup here. So we have this for a little moisture control, just trying it out. And then we'll put on some bubble wrap. This really helps keep moisture in, but it keeps moisture away from the edges and that way if this is dry they're not going to want to crawl up as much you can wipe down the sides of the bin so they don't have moisture on them and this will stop any worms from wanting kind of being drawn up you know how they come out in the rain well moisture will help them want to climb and we don't want them to climb we want them to be happy in the material but they're going to stay with a light on tonight um so probably for at least 24 hours they'll be here under the light and that'll help them not want to crawl 